Sometimes they say I'm mad, but a grain of madness is the best of art. You're not a madman. It's good to have a doctor as a friend. Theodore Jericho has a charged history with psychological disorder. His grandfather and his uncle died while having mental issues. He himself had a nervous breakdown in 1819. The painting he became famous for, The Raft of the Medusa, has mental illness as one of its core themes. The events depicted forced men to kill each other, to commit suicide, and even to practice cannibalism. We made a video about it if you're interested. In it, you can see eyes that are empty or eyes in distress. With his sensibility, Jericho can convey distress and inner pain simply through his subject's eyes. This is exactly what he'll do with his series, Portraits of the Insane. A lot of mystery surrounds it. First, though we know that there are 10 paintings, we only know 5 of them. The other half has been lost. Second, we don't really know if the titles of these paintings are accurate as they were found after Jericho's death. They were only identified from memory. Finally, we don't know why Jericho painted these. We know they were made for Etienne Jean Georget, a French psychiatrist, but we don't know how Jericho knew him. He could have met him as a patient, or at the Beaujon Hospital's morgue, where Jericho would make studies for the Raft of the Medusa. One theory as to why Jericho made these paintings is that they were a gift to Georget for helping him. These paintings could also have been made for therapeutic reasons under Georget's supervision. Thirdly, Jericho could have painted these for scientific reasons, as studies for the still nascent science of psychology. Before the end of the 18th century, mentally ill patients were treated like animals because they were considered to be in a bestial state of mind. A lot of mental issues were explained with religion, often associating them to demonic possessions. Jericho portrays these victims of mental illness humanely. He doesn't show the kleptomaniac stealing from a market. He paints him the same way he would paint any other person. Though the title of the painting is Portrait of a Kleptomaniac, it's rather the portrait of a man who suffers from kleptomania. In other words, Jericho doesn't reduce this man to his mental illness, which at the time is a great sign of empathy. What's interesting is the fact that Etienne Jean Georget pushed for reform which wouldn't consider the mentally ill as criminals. A judge, when looking at the kleptomaniac, would see a law-breaking thief, and when looking at a child snatcher, would see a depraved monster. What Jericho does is trying to restore the humanity which is stripped away from these people. He shows individuals which were considered monsters, yet paints them as victims of unfortunate conditions. Let's look at the portrait of a woman suffering from obsessive envy, also known as the Hyena of Salpetriere. We see how precise and meticulous Jericho was when it came to paint details, yet we can also see how quickly he made these paintings by looking at the brush strokes. Jericho's precision made him break the traditional rules of portraiture which is to idealize the subject, to make them look better than they actually do. This woman is certainly not idealized. Her face is extremely tense, from her tight lips to her rigid eyebrows. Her red-rimmed eyes also add to the idea that this woman is suffering. Whether it's the woman suffering from obsessive envy, the kleptomaniac, the woman addicted to gambling, the child snatcher, or the man suffering from delusions of military command, these people all share a similar inner pain which we can see through their eyes. If this pain is so masterfully communicated, it's perhaps because the artist himself could also feel it. <laughs> 